Hey, welcome to this edition of Snowmobiler Television. On this week's show, I take a look at the brand new 2021 Ford F-150, then an afterburn, we got the Polaris Assault burning things up. I also take a look at the new Kimpex Connect system that adds storage to your sled, and I catch up with the guys from Fallen Riders to learn what they're doing to help people injured in accidents. And it all starts right now. Brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Polaris, think outside. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of pickup trucks for 55 years. Tough, smart, capable. So far this season, I haven't had any crossovers with me here in the studio for Afterburn, but that's all about to change because I've got the 2021 Switchback Assault 146 Matrix chassis here with me in the studio and really doesn't get much better than this. The Assault isn't new for Polaris, but for 2021, the 146 version in the Matrix clothing is, which has made this model even better. By now, the detail improvements of the Matrix over the old Axis are well documented, and all that goodness applies to the Assault experience as well. So, I'm not going to go over the details of how this bodywork keeps you out of the slipstream, or how the 7S display works and integrates into the ride experience with Ride Command, or how the new heated grips work and their temperature controls. And I'm definitely not going to go over further details like the new blade headlight, or the new switch gear, or the increased storage behind the dash and under the seat. I guess I did kind of go through all those details. Anyways, the one I really wanted to talk about was here in the cockpit where the front of the seat really narrows up. This new design gives you a lot of freedom of movement to work your magic both on trail, but especially off. A key to this whole package is the IGX 146 inch rear suspension, which has made the Switchback Assaults legendary in the crossover segment. This suspension is known to give the sled the ability to really pop out of the snow, which is very similar to its RMK cousin, but it also retains the durability needed for hard trail abuse. You'll notice in 2021 that there's still a 144 inch version of the Assault in the old Axis chassis, and this one is two inches longer. And the reason for that is a simple one. In a crafty move by Polaris, they increased the pitch of the 146 inch track, making the distance between the lugs just a little bit bigger. What this did was cut down on the number of lugs, but most importantly, it shaved some weight despite the track being longer. Out front is the same matrix suspension found on straight up trail models, which gives the Assault the handling and control we've all come to expect from this front end. It's also 47 inches wide, the same as other trail sleds, but not adjustable. If you want the ability to narrow up the front end, you'll have to move to the SKS model, which will set the center to center distance as narrow as 39 inches. On the trail, the Assault is set a little taller than the Indy line, and you'll feel this with a little bit more pronounced inside ski lift. I'm totally fine with it, and I think buyers of this machine are more than willing to accept this small sacrifice in handling. Overall, the trail experience is a little bit more spirited than the Indy line as well. The uncoupled rear skid definitely adds to the hooligan factor on the trail, but it's also one of the keys to its abilities off trail. Controlling both ends of the Assault are Walker Evans 2.0 velocity shocks that are compression adjustable only. However, they do have needle technology, which really ramps up compression right at the point of bottoming out. This means your suspension stays supple for most of the ride, but is there for you when you need to take those hard hits. Really, you can't get much better than these shocks on the snow. Whether there's snow conditions here in Ontario, we option for the pre-studded ice storm track because it'll work really good with our unpredictable and sometimes icy snow conditions. Plus, we like the inch and a half lug height for our snowpack, which never gets that deep. And when it does, our options for off-trail riding are very limited anyway. So I know this machine is gonna spend most of its time on the trail. So we optioned it accordingly. The Switchback Assault 146 is just one of those sleds that can do everything really, really well. Now, in STV, I've got the luxury of choosing from a fleet of snowmobiles depending on what type of riding I'm going to be doing. Now, if I had to choose just one sled to do it all, I'd be pretty hard pressed to choose anything any better than this machine. STV's pro tip of the day is brought to you by Yamaha. 
For today's Yamaha Pro Tip, it's all about checking your suspension settings when it comes to your compression and rebound knobs. Now, these things, they do tend to move around for no explanation other than they just get knocked and they might go a click or two off. Or maybe you got a buddy who's trying to mess with you a little bit and he's got one side of your machine cranked all the way in for compression and the other side cranked all the way out. So it's a good idea to check these things from time to time. It's pretty simple to do. Just wind them all the way in gently until you feel the needle kind of bottom out and then count the number of clicks out to a suspension setting that works for you and make sure the other side's balanced. Coming up after the break, we're going to install the Kimpex Connect system. STV is brought to you by Motovan for the love of power sports. One of the great things about snowmobiling here in the east is the ability to ride from point to point on a saddlebagging adventure. I mean, in Quebec, you've got places like the Gaspé region, or here in Ontario, the Rap Tour, just to name a couple of places. Now, if you only ever go on one saddlebagging adventure in your whole snowmobiling life, I definitely suggest it because it's a lot of fun. But there is one thing that can absolutely ruin a saddlebagging snowmobile tour, and that's when you lose your saddlebag. There's never enough room on a stock sled to pack much more than a couple of pair of underwear, let alone enough stuff for a multi-day tour. Riding with a heavy backpack isn't fun either when putting down hundreds of kilometers a day and fabric saddlebags can be unreliable at best, especially the ones that use flimsy plastic clips or snaps to hold them to the sled. Now I've lost stuff off the back of a snowmobile before from zippers coming apart and latches failing or bags being ripped open from riding on rough trails and it really doesn't matter how often you look back here to check on things, you're never going to spot a problem before it is one. And then if your bag does fall off and goes down the trail and you turn around to go back and look for it, if it's on the trail, chances are somebody's already driven over it or if it's bounced off into the bush buried in snow, well, those favorite pair of jammy jams you like to wear at night. <laughs> those things are going to be gone forever. To avoid this issue is a cargo solution that's solidly mounted to the sled like the Kimpex Connect system. This is a modular product that uses rigid mounting brackets bolted directly to the chassis of the sled that your storage accessories clip into. This system fits all the new chassis and in some cases like on this Polaris just bolts right into the T-nut slots on the top of the tunnel. No drilling required. This kit comes with everything you need to make it happen, and because of the modular design of the mounts and accessories, you can outfit the sled any way to suit your needs. The other nice thing is a triple lock fastening system. There's the mechanical clip that latches in first, then a rubber overstrap, and finally, a lockable eyelet for a padlock or hairpin. Now this system is designed to stay in place even if you scrape things along in deep snow or up against something accidentally. Even on short trips, having a secure storage system, one you don't have to worry about falling off all the time, like the Kimpex Connect system, allows you to spend more time enjoying the ride.
Coming up after the break, we're going to catch up with the boys at Fallen Riders. This portion of STV is brought to you by CKX, wear your passion. When it comes to riding any power sport machine, there's always the risk of an accident. Now, we don't wish that fate on anyone, but it does happen. And when it does, the journey for the victim and their family can be a long one. Having someone by your side who's been through what you're going through can make all the difference. So the Fallen Rider support team has um, put together of accident survivors and uh, you know we've all had some major injuries and we came together and banded together as, as a team to offer support and guidance for other injured riders of any type of power sport in Ontario. Um, first thing is, is confusion on what steps to take. You know, everybody says it's not going to happen to them, but it does. And when it does, what do you do? And there's a lot of people that don't know that there's help out there, support, free support and advice from experienced people that have been through it. And uh, you know, the first things are is uh, what to do next. Second thing is, you know, your recovery and recoveries can be really tough depending on the severity of the injury. Um, mine was pretty bad. I broke my back uh, a few years back and uh, I was bedridden for quite a long time and you get depressed, you get down, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of things that come with it. You know, people lose their employers, like they lose their jobs. Um, I think guidance is a very, very big key on what to do when you're injured with a traumatic injury. So some of the guidance we do um, to help people with a new injury is, you know, if it's a, a new amputee, we actually have someone on the team that's a, an Olympic amputee and he uh, comes with us to meet the family, meet the new, the injured survivor, to show him how to use the new prosthetic, give him some advice on how to walk, train, how to wrap your, wrap your injury, because uh, padding's a big deal. Um, in my case, I, I go talk to uh, accident survivors that break their back quite a bit. Um, brain injury survivors, one of our guys has had uh, two brain surgeries and he was blind for five years. And, um, you know, Ray and I, we go prep people for the brain surgeries with Ray's experience. So there's, there's many things. We also um, create GoFundMes for people. You know, we bring tablets to improve brain function. When brain injury survivors need it, we, we donate tablets to the families while they're laying in the hospital beds. Um, there's all kinds of different things. We put charity rides together, benefits. You know, with the events that we, we host now as well, we do a lot of the benefits in, into the, uh, the shows we put on. So with the families that are involved with the injured rider, we'd love for them to know that, you know, things do get better. You know, there is hope at the end of the tunnel. You know, there is a light, right? Um, it feels like your world's crashing, everything's falling apart, but when we come in and we support them throughout the process, and it's not just the start, it's right till the very end until they're healed, we're there. and it's actually nice to see them progress and you can you can see the family how they appreciate it and they actually you can see it they can see the light and it takes time because some of these injuries are very severe we need them to know that you know it does get better so what we do when there's an injury with a rider on a power sport basically we give them a bit of direction based on an experience of ourselves and we get them sort of set up in line with on what step to take next. First thing would be call your insurance about the, the injury and let them know the date and time. Do not elaborate on the injuries until you decide what you're going to do next about that part of the accident. Next thing would be is to maintain your doctor's appointments and make sure you get in touch with your surgeons, your doctors, do all your physio, complete everything and anything that you're told to complete when it comes to your recuperation with your injury. Being in this for about six years now, doing what we've done for six years, we've got to meet so many people through actual power sports shows. At the start of it all and to the present day is through a lot of the uh, trade shows. You know, we've been involved with the International Center's power sports show for years. Um, any type of small bake show, small town shows, we try to attend to let you know the smaller towns know that we're there for their community. As far from Sudbury, to Wawa, all the way out to Ottawa, like we're everywhere. We do all these little shows and um, it's really cool to do because we get to meet a lot of the mayors and councillors and once they get to know us and we set up a table, they want us back all the time. We participate in numerous Christmas parades. I, um, last year alone, I think we did four different Christmas parades with our, we made a float with the snowmobile hanging off the back and, you know, promoting one of the shows that we actually created ourselves throughout the years of being vendors at all the other trade shows. It, it, it opened a lot of doors and a lot of uh, avenues for us to be able to expand and create our own shows. So we um, 
help people through that as well. And doing that, you know, word of mouth is a really big thing. Our, uh, our website, people can go on to our website and there's all kinds of different channels on how to get in touch with us through there. You know, we just try to reach out as much as we can and just get our name out to let people know that we're there for them. Coming up after the break, we take a look at Ford's new redesign of the F-150. Closed captioning is brought to you by Best Western Hotels and Resorts. If you're Ford and you've had the best-selling line of pickup trucks for 55 years straight here in Canada, it would be a huge gamble to redesign such a successful vehicle. Well, for 2021, Ford did just that and went all in on their brand new Ford F-150. To begin with, Ford recognized that owners of pickup trucks use their trucks for work even if that work centers more around recreation. For this new version, Ford set to improve the F-150's functionality as a workspace. Inside the cab is a completely new interior with optional 12-inch center screen where an 8-inch version comes standard. There's also a second productivity screen in front of the driver, allowing you as an owner to integrate better into the information and setups that come standard in this new truck. The F-150 is also equipped with Ford's latest Sync Forest system for improved connectivity to your personal devices. This whole system is also capable of over-the-air updates that not only update your infotainment systems, but also the engine management parameters as well. The center also displays the five onboard cameras, giving you a complete 360-degree view around the perimeter of the vehicle. Further details that improve the F-150's workspaces are ample storage options in the dash and console, along with lockable storage under the rear seats. In addition, a powered, fold-flat console shifter moves out of the way to allow you to flip over the armrest revealing a hard surface desk area, perfect for writing on or setting up your laptop or tablet. There's also available max recline seats that flatten almost completely out for when it's time to take a break. The seats are also heated and cooled with adjustable supports making your time spent in the captain's chair as comfortable as possible. Additional work and or play oriented features continue outside the interior as well. There's zone LED lighting that'll illuminate targeted areas around the perimeter of the truck or the truck bed and the tailgate includes innovative features like recessed pockets to receive C-clamps to hold down timber, plus there's a molded in measuring tape for those times you need to measure something, I'm thinking fish. The tailgate is also super flat to become an excellent work surface, and it even has a cup holder and groove to stand your tablet up in. Another functional detail of the tailgate is an extra set of tie-down points on the side for lashing down items longer than the bed and folded down tailgate. You know, like a sled sticking at the back. Then there's also the integrated tailgate step and handle. Not new, but something that's hard to go without once you get used to it. Oh, and did I mention the tailgate is powered both up and down? One more huge detail that could be one of the handiest options ever for work or play is an integrated Pro Power onboard generator. Capable of running job site equipment like saws or charging cordless tool batteries, this accessory is the perfect companion for recreational activities as well, where portable power isn't always available. This system has enough power to run a fridge in your camper or keep the lights on for fun after dark. Stepping back from all the interior and work slash play features of the F-150, the exterior is also completely new. All the body panels have been redesigned, but the truck retains the familiar F-150 architecture that has made it one of the most recognizable trucks on the road. With different trim levels and appearance packages available, the F-150 can be specced out just about any way you want it to look. With its bold new styling, there's no mistaking, this is an F-150 from every angle. The options continue under the hood with six engine choices starting at a base V6, then on to boosted EcoBoost and diesel options, and the naturally aspirated 5.0. But for 2021, there includes a new optional hybrid system that pairs a 3.5 liter twin turbo EcoBoost with the 35 kW electric motor into a 430 horsepower, 570 foot pound of torque power boost powertrain package. 
This new hybrid system integrates into the 10-speed transmission and the system uses a lithium-ion battery pack located under the truck that's charged by the gas engine, but also uses clever techniques like regenerative braking to keep the charge going. Behind the wheel, the extra power is noticeable under your foot, and when it comes time to get the load moving, it's hard to believe this is just a half-ton pickup truck. It feels more like its big brothers, the F-250s and 350s when it comes to hauling. Having the confidence power brings to the new PowerBoost F-150 sets this truck well ahead of the previous F-150 editions. And when it comes to towing, Ford has for a number of years had systems like the Pro Trailer Backup Assist on board to help with the chores of reversing a trailer. This continues for 2021, however, the trailer guidance feature has made its way down from the F-250, 350 classes into the new F-150. This feature uses the high-resolution cameras on the truck to help guide you along your reversing path with a trailer attached. In addition, the Ford Pass controls will indicate trailer theft alerts, lighting checks, and displays the trailer's braking settings. For work or play, the new Ford F-150 was never really a gamble. It was a sure thing right from the beginning. With all its features and benefits, that tradition of this vehicle being the best-selling line of pickup trucks for the last 55 years in Canada is only going to keep counting. Lately on social media, I've been seeing lots of comments about people riding off trail through private property and farmer's fields. If you enjoy snowmobiling on trails, stick to the trails because those folks are generously allowing us access to their property and they can take it away whenever they want. So until next time on STV, stay to the trails. STV is brought to you by CKX, wear your passion. Schaefer's. Specialized lubricants since 1839. Best Western Hotels and Resorts. Ready to get away? 